Hi there, this is Cell Critical Automaton, and today we are going to cross that bridge when we come to it. But first, I've got something else to say. Just as a reminder where we left off, last time we met Solaire, the Knight of Astora. Solaire, the sunlit knight. He is my favourite character in this game. I really like Solaire. He's just fantastic. It's locked? Oh no. We'll be coming back there much later on. So, you might be surprised to notice that I'm running back where I came from. That's, uh, <laughs> that's because there was something I wanted to mention when I fought the Taurus Demon, but I forgot to do it before leaving his bridge. Well, it's not really a bridge. What's this? The battlements, I guess? The ramparts? The highest part of this castle? Although, well, I suppose it's the city wall. Is the city a castle, or is the castle a city? It's a mystery. Anyway, so, from here, see the bridge? Well, that's the bridge we're going to cross in a minute. See that on the other side? That is the Undead Parish. You see that tower at, ba at the back of the un <coughs> Excuse me, not sure what happened there. You see that tower at the back of the Undead Parish? That is the Bell Tower. That's where we're going to light... Light? That's where we're going to go set fire to the first Bell of Awake. No, we're going to go ring it. Now, if you look down, you can see all of the Undead Burg, the places I ran through last episode. All the way down to the buildings next to the aqueduct. If you... That's the, that's the tower where the sniper was. That over there is where the firebomb guys were. And that door over there is where the bonfire was. This is important because it's the most obvious um, illustration of something that's very important to Dark Souls, which is that all of its locations make absolute sense in terms of their physical architectural interconnectedness. I mean, I use that word a lot, but like... Let's see if we can get a better look from up on there. The thing about it is that all of its spaces make sense with one another in terms of their... in terms of their... Oh, layout's not the right word. What's the right word? Ah, I forget. Oh, also, you might notice that there is another walled city up there. That is Anor Londo, the City of the Gods. We'll be going there much later on. And I probably have quite a bit to say about the parallels between Anor Londo and Olympus. But, you know, let's not get too up our own arse at the moment. Now, from here, we can't quite see... How about from here? Ah, that's a much better view. Remember I said the monoculars were, were useful? Now, what this means is that the entire game, apart from, I think, three locations, is all part of one giant map. There aren't any loading screens between them. I mean, the game, for processing reasons, loads different zones in and out. But every place is connected to every other place um, in such a way as it would if they were real places. There's no, there's none of the cheating you often get in games, where you know a level, connect a level finish and a level starting. You know those places are completely disconnected from one another in a real sense, even if, in the narrative sense, they are two wings of one castle, for example. That over there is where we came up, and you can see there's even still the messages from other players scattered around. We've climbed all the way up here, we can see all the way back down. We can also get a look into the... Uh... Oh, hold on, that's interesting. Mm, anyway. Um, so, whoops, I didn't mean to drop quite that abruptly. I was going to take the ladder down. Oh, well. So, anyway, once we get over to the middle of the bridge, we'll be able to open a shortcut back down to that same bonfire. Well, that's interesting. It hadn't quite spawned in the, uh, the platform in the right way. Anyway, once we get in there, we'll be able to drop back down and get back to that bonfire, which is good, because we kind of need to. Anyway, sorry, I'm getting a bit distracted. <laughs> Basically, I'm astonished by how much effort the developers put into making sure all the locations make sense with one another, geographically speaking. If you climb down through there, you end up back where you were before. This is important because most games don't do that, as I mentioned. Now, the game kind of signposts its threats, but quite subtly. Pretty much every player of this game when they first come to this bridge, they don't notice that there's a charred corpse. They don't notice that there's 
soot and stuff on the bridge. They just casually walk out and then they uh, go say hi to that hollow. And by say hi, I mean stab in the face. However, because I am familiar, I successfully managed to dodge that brutal murdering. That dragon normally flies in. Um, we didn't get to see it happen because I was busy diving out of the way. This is also a fantastic location for farming souls if you happen to want to do that. Because old, uh, old Spiky over there just kills everything on the bridge. So this leads out onto the bridge supports. Fair enough. This over here. Where does this go? Why it goes back down. Let's see if we can just... Uh, oh, there we go. Oh look, it's back here. Like I was saying, all of these spaces are interconnected in a beautifully clever way. That wasn't exactly uh, well phrased, but whatever. So because we're human, we can spend a humanity point to kindle the flame. That will give us extra Estus next time we rest at the bonfire. And one of the things I quite like is it actually makes the flame on the fire bigger. What does that mean? Well, it means that that fire is not burning wood, my friends. That fire is not burning wood at all. I suppose I should level up a little bit. Now, I wanted an extra dexterity point so that I could wield the... Um... Oh, what is... I hate it when I can't remember what things are called. 12 is sort of the baseline for um, leveling things up. So, yeah. I might as well set everything... Oh, I'm not going to bother with resistance, because it's a bit crap. <laughs> um, but I'm going to set the other things to 12, and then I'm going to check what the requirements were for using the spear, because I quite like the spear. Where is it? Winged spear? It is 13 strength and 15 dexterity. So, let's put one more in strength, and... Well, we don't have enough to uh, get our dexterity high enough, but we can start along that path. Now, how many souls do we have as items? If we have enough, we might be able to level up right now. Uh, six soul of lost undead, which I think are worth 200. And then these are worth 400. Um, that's all we've got, so that's about... Um, six times two is 12, so that's about 1,200. That's another 800, so that's about... 2,000 souls, and at the moment it costs 1,500 souls nearly to level up, so that won't be enough. And in that case, I'm going to hang on to them for later on. If we uh, run back up here... Oh, <laughs> whoops, that's the steps. So we can't run back up there because of that. And if you look, those guys have come back to life. I have a lot to say about the mechanics of things coming back to life, but I'm going to save it for later on when there are more different kinds of enemies that we've encountered, because some things come back, some things don't. And, uh... I think that what does not doesn't come back can, much like every single element of this game, give us information about this strange world. Right. So, yeah. Obviously, we can't get past the dragon. That's not actually true. You can bait out a fire. Dodge over here. Now, if we can piss him off enough, he'll fly out to the middle, and it's possible to get underneath him. It's also possible to run underneath before he flames, but that's really difficult because, as you can see, he does not uh, he does not discriminate. He just burns everything immediately. So I'm not even going to bother trying to fight him. Um, we literally can't take him at this point because we don't have a bow. Oh, that was a bit worrying, but no. <laughs> if you do have a bow, you can... Uh, Take a stand here and shoot his tail until his tail comes off. This is a weird mechanic in the game. Quite a few of the bosses have tails that you can hack off. Hacking off the tail gives you a bonus item. In addition to whatever it, else it might drop, there's a unique item. Uh, each boss drops, or at least each of the tail bosses drops. Oh, that didn't kill him. Wow. Tough hollow. Tough hollow. So if you shoot this dragon's tail off, you get the Drake Sword, which is pretty much the best weapon in the game at this point. Um, a lot of people will just head straight for here with a cheap bow bought from the um, bought from the undead merchant back in the undead burg, and then uh, cut off the poor thing's tail. Um. Ouch! I'm trying to kick this guy off the edge, but he's not making it easy, which I suppose is reasonable. Come 
on, come on, come on, come on. Kick. Kick. There he goes. Bye! This place is so pretty in the fall. Ha <laughs> ha! Right, um, yeah. So by sneaking along under here we can bypass the dragon entirely. Obviously on a new game plus you can probably take him out because you'll have a nice strong bow. Look at that, more plague rats. Shield up. Axe out. And we've got to be careful because the thing about rats is that they can poison us. Come on, step off the edge. Oh, that's not fair. You should have fallen off the edge. What even is physics? We just don't know. I'm not going to get close enough for these things to poison me because that would be a bad idea. Ha! Missed. You're a crap rat. You suck. I, uh, I mentioned before about how it's interesting that other animals can clearly be undead too and what that might mean. But, um... Where is poison bug? I wonder why they always say poison bug. Perhaps there isn't a word for rat. Because you can't just type whatever you want. You have to use pre-approved words that are programmed into the game in order to write your message. Oh, clever rat. Oh shit, I got poisoned. Wow, okay. Let's just get rid of him. Being poisoned sucks because it drains your health. You notice that meter at the bottom of the screen? That is, um... If you get hit with an attack that increases your... <laughs> if you get hit with a poisonous attack, that meter starts to fill up. When that meter is completely filled, you get poisoned. And uh, then it slowly ticks away until you die. This guy is a nuisance, but he's not a problem. Well, I mean, yeah, okay. I probably have enough Estus to keep me alive, but um, it's quite a distance to the next uh, the next bonfire. I'm going to try and get there eventually, but yeah. You might notice there is a bonfire on the other side of this little gate here. This gate opens from the other side. Why can't I get to the other side? Because it's under the bridge. Not under the bridge, it's the, uh, the gate at the other end of the bridge that we just ran under. You can see the dragon's shadow even though there's a wall in the way. <laughs> Ah, yes, you might notice that glowy field and that there's a thing appeared under my health bar. That is my um, blue tearstone ring. Its effect is that it... Well, when you get under a certain threshold of hit points, it massively increases your defence. See that big old piggy up there? I'm trying not to aggro him. Because he's a big old piggy, and big old piggies are a threat. Boom, in your face. Come on, come on, come on. That's him down. I'm getting a bit tired of the axe, and uh, since it's my goal to show off, as, show off as much of the game as possible, I do intend to switch my weapons quite a bit, which means I can't go for any particular strength or dexterity focus build, but that's fine. Because, you know, it's possible to beat the game uh, without levelling up at all if you want to, if you're good enough, because the dodge roll mechanics are so good. Like, if you know what you're doing, you don't need to level up at all. Another element of the game's uh, sort of subtle, subtle, constant multiplayer is that if another player rings one of the bells of awakening and you're in the same area, you can hear the bell ring. That's what that ding dong just was. Um, let's see if we can uh, lure this guy out of the way of those two crossbow mans. Because, yeah, I don't fancy getting shot full of crossbow bolts. Come on. Lift up your shield. Or get shot in the back, I don't care. It's all good to me. Oh, come on. Don't kick him, because I don't want to drop my shield in case these guys hit me. Whoops. Wow, that was close. Oh, shit. Well, that is my first death. As the um, <laughs> as the game's uh, death text so callously states, as you can see, I'm back to prune mode. That's what happens when you die; you turn back into a hollow, to indicate that your repeated deaths are bringing you closer and closer to that uh, to that edge. I'm going to essentially run out, get my souls, and then come back to this bonfire and rest. And I'll call that the end of the episode because it's quite a ways to the next uh, the next bonfire and I don't really want to uh, I don't really want to have this episode run over and we're already pushing up against the time limits. Ha! 
such to be you. Oh shit. Wow, that was close. I'm really getting overconfident. Overconfidence is almost always your killer in Dark Souls. As you saw with that rat that killed me. Uh, come on. Come over here, you bastard. Oh, fine. Boom. Down he goes. The thing about kicking people off ledges is that you don't get their, uh... You can't loot their bodies, but whatever. Probably didn't have anything I wanted. Anyway. Ah, oh, dicks, I got poisoned again. Well, that's what happens when you get overconfident. Trust me, next episode I will be very careful. Very careful indeed. Did the other one fall off the edge? I suppose it must have done. I only see one in here. At least it can't re-poison me, still. It is a pain to be poisoned. Almost all of the rings in the game are unique, and they all have different effects. So, there's two different tear stone rings, the blue and red. The red has the same effect as the blue tear stone ring, except with attack points instead of defense points. That's pretty much it. Now, I'm going to be abusing the magic a little bit because I want to get back to my bloodstain without being killed. If you die without recovering your bloodstain, say goodbye to all the souls you had. I didn't really have very many souls, so I don't particularly, I'm not particularly worried about losing that bloodstain. But, you know, it can suck if you run all the way through an area, kill its bosses, and have, you know, 50,000 souls, and then some dickhead hits you with a crossbow bolt or a sword or something. The aiming is always a little bit loose with these things, but whatever. I am just going to blast everyone, because, you know, I'm running back to the bonfire afterwards anyway. Hopefully you aren't all disappointed with my uh, <laughs> early death. I had been hoping to make it all the way up to the first Bell of Awakening without getting, uh, without, uh, getting killed, but I'm pretty sure I can make it the rest of the way if I am careful. Here's my bloodstain. I'm a little undead, short and stout. Here is my bloodstain, here is my spout. That doesn't quite make sense, but I don't care. As you can see, the magic is very useful for when you're feeling pissed off with hollows, because you can just... Ow, shit! Yes, you can just shit. Come on. There we go. Let's get rid of this guy. Um... Whoopsie daisy. Yeah, if you get out of range, they won't home in, so... Right, I'm just going to show off a little bit here. Um, oh look, my a solo ho sol hollow soldier helm. My first piece of armour. That will come in handy. You, uh... Where are you off to, mate? <laughs> so yeah, that's a giant armoured pig. They're dangerous. I got items off that corpse. What are the items I got? I got something that is useful in pretty much only this point in the game. What it is, is the Alluring Skull. What it does is certain enemy types get attracted to it if you throw it at a location. Such as this guy. You throw it in the fire, he's like, oh that sounds delicious, I'm gonna go sit in this fire until I find out what it is. You can fight it one-on-one, uh, -on -one, and interestingly, if you have a spear, you can take it out pretty easily. You can dodge behind it and um, Let's just say uh, Pike stuff up the uh, Pike stuff up the old rear end, like some kind of extreme colonic irrigation. Now, let's see if we can lure him over again. <gasps> oh no, we fell. Is he going to go for me or is he going to go for it? Let's be careful. You can also do the old uh, the old video game dozy do where you goad something into charging and then uh, dodge out of its way, it runs into a wall, and then you run around behind it and stab it. You can also do that with the bonfires. Basically, there's a bunch of ways to take that thing out. You notice that it shimmered out? Didn't leave a corpse? Well, it's not coming back. So, that about wraps it up for this episode. Next time, I'll zip through this segment and hopefully make it to the next bonfire. I'm just going to run back to this bonfire here, and... Uh, actually, you know, I don't have that much to say, so... I could probably end it here. 
I don't know, do you want to see me run all the way back to the bonfire? Don't know if I would. But then, you know, if you want to, you can just close it now. But what if I say something really funny before I get there? You'll have missed out, you know? All your friends will be like, oh wow, did you see Self-Critical Automaton's latest, latest uh, Let's Play? That joke at the end was fantastic. But uh, no, you won't, because you skipped it, skipped ahead, and you'll be too ashamed to go back and uh, listen to it again. It'll be all your fault. So, we've probably got enough, actually, to level up. If we uh, pop all these swords. Let's see. One. Two. This takes forever. <laughs> I should probably edit it out, but, you know... I'm pretty new to this. I'm kind of new to the whole editing thing. I think I can, uh, I think I can leave it in justifiably. Now, what I'd really like to know is where am I keeping all this stuff? I mean, it's not like I'm wearing an armor, you know. It's not like I have pockets. It's not like I have pouches. It's like am I pulling those out my loincloth because uh, it's probably pretty hot and sweaty in there. Uh, I'm going to pop one of these humanity. I've already uh, mentioned that there's essentially two kinds of humanity, liquid humanity and I guess solid humanity. There's different names for it, but that's the way it works out. Liquid humanity you can lose, solid humanity you can't. Solid humanity is an item you use that gives you one or two humanities. And uh, liquid, liquid humanity is the humanity that you have just in your body at the moment. So what was it? We needed 13 strength, 16 dexterity. Fantastic! We've got exactly enough for that many. Well, not exactly enough, but you know what I mean. Um, oh, right, I forgot. I'm going to reverse my hollowing, that's why I popped a humanity. So, yeah. If you die and fail to recover your bloodstain, you'll lose whatever liquid humanity you had. Liquid humanity increases your resistances and your uh, item find chance and a few other things. Anyway, that's, uh, that's enough from me. I will catch you guys on the flip side. Bye!